Welcome back. It's another edition of NJCAA All Access. Thanks for tuning in again. I'm Zach McKinstry. And I'm Alexa Wesselman. And we have a jam-packed show for you today. Not only do we have all of our normal segments, topped matchups, rankings, JUCO gems, but we also have a special JUCO Game Changers interview. Plenty to look forward to on this week's episode, but we start with the big matchups in junior college basketball this week, starting with our JUCO basketball scoreboard. A ton of ranked matchups coming into this week and a couple of big upsets, starting with number nine Lee knocking off number five Trinity Valley in Texas. Devion Laverne led the way for the Navigators, dropping in three triples and 22 points, while his teammate Devontae Austin added 13 and five off the bench. And Lee was in front by five points late against the number five team in Division I men's basketball. The Cardinals did their best to stave off the upset with 15 seconds left. This long three-pointer caroms off the glass and in, cutting the deficit to two. And then Trinity Valley get their chance after this bad miscue off a Lee inbound results in an errant pass and a turnover. The Cardinals had a look for three and the win, but we did not. Camera did not catch up to the play, but I can assure you the shot ricocheted off the back iron and TVCC was upset, adding their third loss of the year. The other major defeat was number two Daytona State, who lost their first game of the season 88 to 94 after the number 21 East Florida State Titans shot 61% from the field and 45% from three to knock off the Falcons. And not an upset, but a nice statement win for the Cowley Tigers, who beat the 19th ranked Grizzlies 77 to 58. On the women's side, we had one of the biggest midseason matchups of the year with number four McLennan taking down number two Colin at the buzzer. It was as tight as could be. Neither team had a 10 point lead and with the deficit so close, the excitement picked up late. This three ball cut into the Lady Cougar lead with less than three minutes to play. And then on the following possession, the high lassies would strike from deep again. This time it's Jalea Ingram who fires up the crowd, forces the timeout, and gives McLennan the lead. Colin would tie things up and have one last chance at the end of the fourth quarter, but the good inbound feed was for naught and the missed shot sent us to OT. Under a minute in overtime, an and one for the Cougars gives them back the lead by one, but rebounds were the story of this game. McLennan trailing by one, 10 seconds left. They get their own miss, put it back, and get it to fall with less than a second to all but wrap it up. The inbound pass was stolen away as the clock ran out in Texas, and McLennan racks up a massive victory in overtime, 70 to 69. I hate to keep piling on to Trinity Valley, but the women's side suffered an upset loss as well, falling to unranked Angelina. And number 25, Chipola will move up in the rankings after defeating number 11, Pensacola State, by 15. Some good ones this week in D2 men's as number four Parkland was dropped by unranked Danville area and the Jaguars thanks to some late free throws. Number nine Ellsworth added another ranked win, dominating number seven Kirkwood. Back to ladies basketball. Number two, Iowa Western crawled out of Des Moines with a victory thanks to this game winner by Kaylee Rose West. That moves the Reavers to 17 and one, and Mesa added a close win, 54-50 over number 16, Pima. In D3 men's, number six, Prince George was shocked by the College of Southern Maryland Hawks. These stat lines were crazy. CSM had three double-doubles, with Amir Dade going for 21 points and 10 rebounds, Ryan Blakey adding 12 points and 10 rebounds, but the hero of the game was Nahine Willis, who added 21 points and 12 rebounds, including the offensive board, which kept this possession alive. You can see the fans going crazy as the Hawks reset with 10 seconds left. They drive again, miss again, and it's Wills who cleans up the glass, puts it back up and in at the horn to give Southern Maryland their 11th win of the year in game winning fashion. And Herkimer added a statement win over number 12 Mohawk Valley, 93 to 89. 
Lastly, it is a mess in the top three of Division Three women's basketball. Number one, Rochester CTC shows why they're at the top, blowing out number three, Minnesota West. And number two, Owens was upset by an unranked Edison State team as the Chargers win by 22. Hoping for a lot more matchups like those this weekend. Here's Alexa with the scoop of all the big matchups that you need to know about this week. There are obviously a lot of games across the NJCAA that are considered big matchups over the next week, but we're going to highlight a few, and there are two big ones coming up that you do not want to miss. We start with D1 men's basketball, number four Chipola versus number six Northwest Florida State. This is a rematch of the overtime game from last week. During that game, both teams at one point had double digit leads on each other, and it came down to free throws in that overtime to give the win to Chipola. This is also a very big rivalry in the Panhandle Conference, which makes the stakes even higher. From one big matchup to the other, D1 women's basketball. Number one, Northwest Florida State versus number two, Gulf Coast State. Northwest Florida State obviously undefeated the defending national champions. Gulf Coast State only one loss to Eastern Florida State. And if you tuned in to NJCAA Hot Hoops yesterday, you heard Dan Olson and Kenya Landers preview this game, which they believe could be the national championship matchup. In D2 men's basketball, we've got number four Des Moines area versus number seven Ellsworth. The Bears look like a team hitting their stride with multiple players scoring double digits each game recently. And the Panthers have also been beating their opponents by double digits as of late. In D2 women's basketball, number seven Parkland versus number 20 Lincolnland. Parkland has been consistent in their play and their record is showing that. Lincoln Land has only been ranked since mid-December, but this is a chance for them to get a big upset that could dramatically impact their season. Those D1 men's and D1 women's basketball games are going to be very good. So take note of when they're on and be sure to watch them. We're gonna take a break, stay with us. Intensity fuels these champion student athletes to greatness. Zurich Insurance is proud to be the official provider of student athlete insurance for the National Junior College Athletic Association. Throughout the highs, we cheer along to their screams of victory. Throughout the lows, we support them through their tears of defeat. Zurich Insurance, helping student athletes play the sport they love. I have a little birthday message for you to someone too. I heard you really love basketball. You're a good shooter and a good dribbler. Happy birthday, MJ, and hope you enjoy your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome back to NJCAA All Access. Obviously, we love to highlight NJCA alumni and the fantastic things that they're doing once they leave our organization. So on today's JUCO Game Changers, Zach is gonna talk with Justin Strickland. He played basketball at Davidson Davey and had a very successful career there, but now he's transitioned into another successful career. Welcome into JUCO Game Changers. We got a special guest for you today, an Ernest and Young Southeast Entrepreneur of the Year, a former NJCAA All American Hooper, and from what I hear, an all around good guy. Justin Strickland, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you taking the time today. Yeah, of course, thanks for having me. Uh, before we get into your business career and your success beyond college, let's go back to those college days uh, at Davidson Davey playing basketball with the Storm. What went into the decision to at attend a junior college and how were your was your year there? Yeah. Uh, you know, I started my, my collegiate career at, at Guilford College uh, and had a, had a good year there. We went to the Elite Eight, so I gained a lot of, uh, you know, experiences, but um, I also got hurt that year, my freshman year, and had to sit out quite a few games. And so I had aspirations of um, you know, trying to get to a D1 school. And at that time, uh, there was no transfer portal. So in order to, to do that, you had to set out a year um, or you were what they referred to as a 424 student, which is four year uh, NCAA school down to a two year back to a four year. 
And uh, look, I, I love to play basketball, so I had no intentions of, of sitting out any games and certainly not a year. So uh, I made the decision to transfer to my hometown. It was their first year. I thought I could step in and have a little bit of an impact on um, you know, getting the program off the ground. So that was exciting and ultimately led to the decision for me to go play at Davidson Davy. Yeah, what was your time like for you there? Yeah, well, while I was there, um, it was a great year. You know, I had a, uh, a tremendous one-year career uh, at Davidson Davy. Uh, if I could have stayed longer, I would have. Uh, I think that Coach Ridge is, has done an unmatched job uh, at the junior college level. I think his track record at this point speaks for itself very loudly. Um, and so I just feel uh, you know honored to be part of that inaugural season and and kind of set the standard for for who Davidson Davy um, or what Davidson Davy basketball should be, uh, just in terms of competitive spirit and winning as an expectation and not a pipe dream. Uh, so that that year was was a terrific year for me personally and and professionally. Well, your, your career after college has certainly been one, a great example of paving a path for yourself. What was the motivation into starting your own business? And did you ever expect it to grow to the heights that it has, you know, being top 500 in the Inc. 5000? Um, well, I guess I'll answer that in a couple different parts. My, my motivation for everything I've ever done in life is just to like, be the best I can be at my God-given potential at whatever that is. And I, I rarely compete with other people. Um, I don't think there's a lot of like value in that. I mean, there's some people that are just flat out more talented. There's folks on the basketball court that are six foot 10 with 40 inch verticals and run four three forties. And uh, no matter how hard I try or how hard I train, uh, I will most likely never have that type of athleticism. And so I've always just looked at whether it's basketball or, or um, business is my job is to maximize my God given potential. And to do that, you've got to be incredibly disciplined, incredibly hungry, uh, and, and incredibly, um, you know, just driven uh, to do more. So I think that, you know, my basketball career, um, most people would look at it and call me an overachiever. Um, and then my business career, they're probably going to do the exact same thing. And so I take a lot of pride in, in trying to do things that others say you can't. That gives me a lot of fulfillment. Yeah, that's a great segue. I was going to ask you what lessons from your NJCAA level days at Davidson Davy do you still carry with you in your business career? Uh, well, through my high school career and, and my NJCAA uh, days, I'm sure that when I stepped on the floor, folks were looking around for someone completely different when they had read articles about a kid averaging 35 a game and leading the country at all divisions and scoring. I'm sure they were not looking for, you know, six foot Justin Strickland. Um, and, and I think that, you know, I've, I've done um, a fairly good job. I've done, a, I've done a poor job at a lot of things, too, to be clear. But uh, I think I've done a, a fairly good job at blocking out distractions and noises. I've spent, you know, my entire life, basically, um, up against folks who say you can't, you won't. I mean, starting my freshman year in high school, I had kids on the varsity team telling me I'd never get my shot off on varsity in high school. Um, so I think it's it's always been about just maximizing my ability and, and proving other people wrong. And I think at some point, um, you know, the the flip, you know, you'll, you'll flip the script and you'll make a few believers. Yeah, well, Justin, I'm sure there are a lot of NJCA athletes right now that are in the position that you were in. Might have success in junior college. They don't know what's next. What message do you have for those kids on what's coming up in their career? Uh, relating to basketball specifically or, or just life? just life yeah I, I think that my message is um, to focus inward um, find your center of gravity uh, there's a great book from Michael Singer called living untethered and I think the uh, the best way to kind of fulfill that uh, that book is find what makes you tick and who you are and don't deviate from that center of gravity so everybody has this persona of who they want to be. that's why they do New Year's resolutions up here. I want to weigh this much. I want to lift this much. I want to uh, give this much. Uh, so everybody has a persona of who they want to be. And I don't think that um, you should ever lose sight of that the other 364 days a year. And where, where, in my opinion, the highest achievers come in are the ones that can stay disciplined to that persona of who they want to be, you know, be or become, uh, regardless to what type of external um, distractions may come their way. So 
my advice would just be find the persona and the person that you aspire to be uh, and then find a way to live untethered. Don't be distracted by shiny new objects or for other people. Certainly words to live by if you're listening in. And Justin, that's all I had for you. Appreciate the time once again. And uh, thank you for your insight. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. So we go from a JUCO player having success to a current JUCO coach making a difference. Dexter Young is the head coach of the Dallas College Eastfield men's basketball team, and the Harvester Bees competed in a Coaches vs. Cancer game tonight. Coaches vs. Cancer is a nationwide basketball event in conjunction with the National Association of Basketball Coaches that helps raise awareness and raise funds for the American Cancer Society. It's a matter that's near to Coach Young's heart as his father passed from cancer 12 years ago and his mother and sister are survivors. It's big, it's, it's coach versus cancer. It's big to me, my dad was my best friend. He passed from cancer and he had a lot of different lung cancer, back cancer. And my sister beat breast cancer. My mom beat breast cancer. My sister lost her breast. But it was just, it's a meaningful night. Like my aunts have passed from it. So it's just meaningful to me that I want to represent it. I wish we could do it all year. It's a great cause and was an important game for Eastfield as they took on Dallas College Brookhaven. The NABC event has already raised $33,000 with a goal of $500,000 and you can help donate to Eastfield's efforts in the Coaches vs. Cancer event at the QR code on the screen. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've got our rankings and then JUCO gyms, so stay with us. a life a good one? Is it our adventures? Or the friends we find along the way? Is it the challenges we conquer together? Maybe it's the people's lives we touch every single day. So what makes a life a good one? You'll have to figure that one out for yourself. Welcome back to NJCAA All Access. All right, let's just jump right into the rankings because we've got a lot of basketball to get through. Starting with D1 men's. South Plains is still the team to beat and they're pretty much the only team that didn't move on the rankings board this week. Mineral Area slides into second, Barton into third, Chipola in fourth, and Daytona State now fifth. Vincennes falls to eighth, Triton falling to 16th. Hutchinson moves down to 19th, and Caldwell College joins the rankings at 25th. D2 men's basketball, National Park keeps their number one status. Macomb moves into third, Des Moines area moves up into fourth, South Suburban falls to fifth, Parkland falls to eighth, Kirkwood falls to 10th, St. Clair moves up to 17th, and Fayetteville Tech makes their debut at 20th. D3 men's, the top five don't move. Brookdale still staying at number one. Prince George's falls to eighth, and Paul D. Camp, CC, popping up in that 15th spot. In D1 women's basketball, another week, Northwest Florida State at the top, followed by Gulf Coast in second. Side note, these two teams play each other, like we talked about earlier in the show, so be sure to watch that game this weekend because it'll have a big impact on next week's rankings. Collin falls to 5th, Three Rivers at 9th, Butler to 18th, and Blinn to 24th. In D2 women's basketball, Johnson County still at the top, and no other changes are in the top 10. Des Moines area getting that 18th ranked spot this week. And we will wrap it up with D3 women's basketball. Rochester is still number one, Minnesota West at 5th, and Mohawk Valley getting a new ranking at 15th. All right, it's now time for Zach with Juco Gems. 
Plenty of buzzer-beating basketball to headline our highlights. Dazzling plays all over, but we start our junior college gyms in the land of Lincoln at Wabash Valley College in Illinois. The Warriors only had two seconds left and trailed by three, but Brandon Razor Moore saves the day and sends it to overtime with a hop, skip, and a jump and a 47-foot floater to beat the horn. It was a raucous scene in Mount Carmel as the Warriors would go on to beat Kaskaskia in the extra frame thanks to this miracle by the sophomore guard. Next up is Seward County CC who has this inbound with two seconds left, trailing by two in the Jayhawk Conference. Take a listen. Down to Dade Martin, left corner, Whitlock a three. He got it! He got it! It's a buzzer beater for Amir Whitlock! 79, paint it green. Paint it green. The Naval Academy transfer Amir Whitlock sends the greenhouse into a frenzy and Seward County knocks down Independence 82 to 81. And how about that shot in the clutch from Whitlock? On to New Jersey, no buzzer beaters here, but a nasty transition alley-oop instead. Maurice McKnight finds Devin Geiger on the lob and he throws it down in a game against Brookdale CC. Good work there on the alley-oop. Last one and it's back-to-back -back weeks for former Ranger College star Kasey Tominaga. Last time we saw him he hit the dagger against Purdue, this time it comes against Northwestern. Seems like this guy was built for the clutch as he catches and cashes another big one and the celebrations are always on point for the Nebraska Cornhusker who ends that game for Nebraska and he ends this week's junior college gyms. Two weeks in a row that we get highlights from Kasey Tomanaga. Just love seeing Juco alumni doing good things. Yeah, kid's a stud. Uh, he's been balling out at Nebraska. And as always, reminder to send in those top clips, those highlights, those alumni clips. Uh, we'll take anything on our social medias at NJCA Network on Twitter and on Facebook. So keep sending those in and keep tuning in. We thank you as that wraps up our episode today. And we will see you right back here on the NJCA Network next Thursday. Take care.